hello guys so we have come to the last aspect of the methods of economic analysis and this is our last class for the methods of economic analysis and don't forget this class is proudly sponsored by o3 school jump application And it is available for your Android phones and your laptops. All the past questions there is for the JAMB examination is available on the platform and you can access it once you are what? Ready. Now, the last aspect we are looking at is what? The measures of dispersion. At first, we started with what? The scientific methods. We went on to look at what? basic tools for economic analysis we looked at the measures of central tendency and we're wrapping it up with the measures of dispersion the measures of dispersion is simply what a, a spread the measures of dispersion let's give it definition measures of dispersion is simply the spread of data around the mean. So this is the basic definition of the measures of what dispersion. The measures of dispersion is simply what the spread of what data around the world mean you can also call it a word measure of what variability now the measures of central tendencies were three we have the mean median and mode but in this case the measures of dispersion of what four we have range we have mean deviation we have variance and we have standard deviation. These are the, what, the measures of dispersion. Now, what's starting with what range? The range is simply the difference between the biggest and all, we call it the greatest and the, the smallest number in a given set of words of data. When it is very simple, very, very simple, just the difference. You find the highest number or the highest element in a given set of data and you subtract it from the smallest and then that gives us the words, the range. For example, if we have a given set of data, we have five, we have five, we have four, we have four, we have two, we have one, we have three, we have two, we have, two, we have one, and so on like that. We're looking for the range here. The range is simply what the difference between the biggest number and what the smallest number. The biggest number here we have is what five. The difference between the smallest number, which is what one, five minus one is equal to what four. So the range is what four. The range is very simple, very simple. But another reason, a reason why the range is not really reliable is because it doesn't evolve. All the quantities in that in a given set of data, and it is just the word the difference between the word the greatest and what the smallest number in a given set of data. So the range is not used in a in a larger platform. The range is not really used. Now the next thing we look at what is the mean deviation. The mean deviation is simply what an average of the word set of distances between data and what and the mean. The mean deviation is an average of what the difference between what the set of um, elements in the given data and what and the mean. The formula for mean deviation we have d is equal to what summation x minus x bar over what n. Mean deviation d is equal to what summation x minus what x bar over n, where x here is what the elements and then x bar is what the mean and then we have n which is what the number or the word, frequency the number of elements or the word the frequency now we're going to look at one example to what illustrate what the mean deviation is about we have looked at range the next one we're looking at is what 
main deviation. D, which is equal to what? Summation x and it's x bar all of our n. Now let's look at this question. It said find the mean deviation of the set of numbers. Of the set of numbers four, five, and nine. Now, looking at the formula given above, we have mean division d equal to what the summation x minus x bar over what over n. So, the first thing we have to look for here now is what mean, which is what x bar. And mean is equal to the sum of numbers of what your total number, which was frequency 4 plus 5 plus 9 over what 3. 4 plus 5, this is 9, 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 over 3, which is equal to what 6. Now let's look at what the mean deviation, which is what mean deviation equal to what summation x minus x bar over what n. Now let's go. So it's now equal to what? x the first element four four minus nine plus five minus nine plus nine minus nine over what three now before we go further i would like to explain to you that in mean deviation all numbers are treated as what positive so if when we subtract 4 minus 9, it's supposed to give us minus 5 is done also. But in mean deviation, it is written as what? 5 because all the numbers are what, treated as what? Positive numbers. So we now have equal to what? 4 minus 9, 5. Plus 4 plus what? 0. All over what? 3. So equals 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. 9 over 3 equals to 3, which is equal to what? 3. So therefore, the mean deviation of this set of what, numbers is what? Three, which is what the difference from the mean is what three for this set of numbers the mean deviation or the difference of the set of numbers from the mean or the average of the difference from the set of numbers is what three following the definition that was given where we said mean deviation is what the average of the difference between a set of numbers and the mean from the mean is what mean deviation so three here will be the mean deviation for the set of numbers four five and nine the next one we'll be looking at was what we call variance okay so i'll look at an example don't forget the formula mean deviation d is equal to what summation x minus x bar over what n now variance is not very different from Main deviation. The only difference we we'll have in variance is that variance is what the square of the words of the differences. Now let's see. We have variance v. You know, in mean deviation, we said mean deviation d equal to what summation x minus x bar over n. But in variance. It is summation what x minus x bar square, which is what the square of the word average of the difference between a set of numbers and the word and the mean. So v will now be equal to what summation x minus x bar square all over what n. I will have to look at what examples. I said find variance. So three, five, seven, nine, and what? Eleven. So yeah, we are dealing with square. The square here is towards help us eliminate the word, the minus sign that is present in or that we will get 
when dealing with what variance. Now, the first thing we do as usual is to define the mean, which is what x bar. Mean is equals what three plus five plus seven plus nine plus eleven over how many numbers do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So we have five. Then 3 plus 5 is what? 8. 8 plus 7, 15. 15 plus 9, 24. 24 plus 11, we have 35. 35 over what? 5, which is equal to what? 7. That is our mean. Now, the next thing we're looking at is what? Variance V. So, variance V will now be equal to what? Summation, which is what? The first element will have what? 3 minus 7 all square plus 5 minus 7 all square plus 7 minus 7 square plus 9 minus 7 square plus 11 minus 7 square over the total number frequency n, which is equal to 5. So we have equal to 3 minus 7 is 4. 4 square is 16 plus 5 minus 7, 2. 2 square or minus 2 rather. Minus 2 square is 4. 0, this will be 0, plus this is 2, which is 4 again, and this is 4, which is what? 16 over what? 5. So, equal to 16 plus 4, 20, 20. That's 40 over what? 5. I hope you understand how I got my calculation. If you're not so convinced, you can use your calculator and do yours. So, 40 over 5 is equal to what? 8. The variance V in this set of numbers is equal to what? 8, which is the squared average between the, what, the distance of a set of data and the, what, the mean. The distance between the set of data and the mean, the squared average is what we call the, what, the variance. And the simplest part or the last and the simplest aspect is what? Standard deviation. Standard deviation is simply what? The squared root of variance. Of variance. V. Very simple and self explanatory. Standard deviation is what is what the square root of what variance V. And then I like by myself, V variance will not be equal to what the square root. Oh, sorry, rather the square of standard deviation X D. So standard deviation X D equal to what the square root of variance while variance is equal to what the square of the word standard deviation. For example, in a question, they can tell you that the variance of a given set of numbers is 16. Find the word, the standard deviation. It is very simple. You should not spend more than 30 seconds on that question. Square root of 16 is equal to what? 4. Therefore, the word, the standard deviation is what? 4. Very simple and self-explanatory. Don't forget, this is the last aspect we are dealing with when it comes to what? The measures of what? The method of economic analysis, where at first we look at our scientific methods, then we look at all the approaches, then we look at what the basic tools for economic analysis, where we look at what the tables, we looked at the charts, we looked at the graphs, and then we looked at the, what the measures of central tendencies, which was divided into three, we had the mean, the median, and the mode. And the last aspect we have were the measures of what dispersion. Then we talked about the range, we talked about the mean deviation, we talked about this variance and we looked at what the standard deviation where we said the range is simply the difference between the word the greatest number and the word the smallest number and then the mean deviation is simply what the average of the difference between a set of numbers and what the mean and then we looked at variance which was the squared average and then standard deviation which was the, word, the square root of what variance I believe we've been able to touch every aspect of methods of economic analysis and from our next class we'll be looking at something very different from what we have been looking at for the past two classes and when you open the O3 Schools Jam application and you type in 
methods of economic analysis. All the possible questions that have come out in JAMP under this topic will be available for your information and for your use. Therefore, you can answer all the questions. And then if you have any question or anything to ask or anything you're not familiar with, you can write it down in the comment section under this post and I will be able to answer it for you directly. Or if you need to refresh your memory, you can still come back to these videos, watch, and then thank me later. Thank you very much. This is the end of the class.